Spider Beams, the full range now in stock. Hello once again and uh, thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. Hope you're keeping well. I'm going to take a look in this video on external power monitoring. Now most modern transceivers, in fact I think all modern transceivers have got some means of indicating how much power is coming out of your transceiver and of course a number of them have got built-in antenna tuners and quite a few will tell you what the VSWR is on the uh, feed line. So if you've got all this information on your transceiver front panel or display why would you need an external VSWR power meter? I mean, is it a waste of money? Is it just one of these? Is it sort of a, a bit of an extra jewellery that ham radio operators purchase because it's there to be purchased and it makes the shack look a bit more busy and so forth? Well, I suppose in some cases the answer is yes. But I think there is actually a reason why some people find an external VSWR power meter useful and there's good reasons for it as well. So in this video I'm going to take a look at a typical VSWR power meter, what it does and it's up to you to decide whether you think it's worth you purchasing one or not because you don't want to waste money but on the other hand are you missing out on something? <laughs> so let's let's take a look at a typical VSWR power meter, a budget line one, one that we sell, and you decide whether you think you need one or you don't need one. I've got a little test set up here which um, I'm going to use to demonstrate the various points in this video. It uses an IC7300, which is my current transceiver. Works very well actually. <laughs> it does most things I wanted to do. Quite simple and probably typical of a lot of the transceivers that uh, certainly some of the beginners will have. The meter I'm going to use for this demonstration is the AVR AV201, which is uh, designed for HF up to uh, two meters, and is a typical SWR power meter that uh, many would use. On the AV201. You've got three power settings. You've got 200, 20 watts and 5 watts. So that caters for most uh, operations, whether it be QRP or the 100 watt transceiver or even the 200 watt transceiver. Then we've got a switch here which says power calibrate VSWR. I'll come back to that. And then on the right hand side, we've got reflected, forward and off. Now off, all off does, it just turns the meter off. It doesn't mean to say that the uh, meter is open circuit, the signals still go through the meter, but uh, for whatever reason they've decided they would have an off position there. When you're measuring VSWR, you need a steady signal. And on many rigs, the only way to get a steady signal is to either switch to the AM or FM mode, turn the power down and then transmit. Now, because you're going to do this on a live band, assuming that you're using an external aerial, you need to make sure, of course, that there is no video on that frequency. And the other thing to do is to run low power. Now, I've set this transceiver to 5 watts, and I'm generating 5 watts of FM. And as you can see, it's given me full scale. If I, if I switch this up to 20 watts, obviously you'll get less Move, need to move because it's now going from 0 to 20 watts and if I go to 200 watts you just get a smidge there. 
So that's how we adjust the power on the meter. And as I say, you need a steady signal in order to be able to measure VSWR. Now at the moment, I've got the center switch switch to power because I'm interested in measuring power. And I've got the switch on the right set to forward so I can actually read the forward power. Now if I transmit now, I've got the five watts. I've set the meter to 20 watts, so I'm going to increase the power on here to full scale, which is going to be around about 20 watts. So we've now got full scale deflection at 20 watts. Now if I switch this to reflected, you can see the reflected power. Now the reflected power is reading zero because I'm going into a dummy load. If I was going into the antenna system, I'd probably see a little bit of movement on there. That is reflected power. It's not VSWR, it's reflected power. So you can check your forward power and you can check your reflected power. So far, I've been measuring power and reflected power. Now, if I move this switch here down from, from uh, power down to CAL, C-A-L, calibrate, I've set my transceiver to 5 watts with a steady carrier, which I've got because I'm, I've switched to FM mode and I've gone into a dummy load. Now, if I transmit 5 watts and I rotate this sensitivity control, I can actually get full scale deflection. So I've got full scale deflection with 5 watts. Now, all I need to do is now to switch the switch from CAL to SWR and I'll see the SWR. So there we are, we're on CAL, SWR, surprise, surprise, it's absolutely zero. Full scale on CAL, switch to SWR and we've got zero or one to one SWR. I've now set the transceiver back up to 100 watts on SSB. I've set the switch on the right hand side here to forward. I want to read power, so I switch that switch there to power. And I'm running 100 watts, so I need to be on the 200 watt scale because if it was on the 20 watt scale, the meter would be banging against the stop. So we're now on 200 watts, and I'm going to speak into the microphone. Bear in mind that the 100 watt, this is a 200 watt scale, so the 100 watt is a bit further back to the left. So let's transmit. Hello test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Hello test, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor, G30JV. Now you'll notice that that meter goes nowhere near 100 watts because the meter has got inertia and it's going to take a certain amount of time for it to get up there and by the time it gets up there, it's time to go back. So you get a fairly low reading. On the AVAR meter here, and in fact a lot of meters, you've got something called average. If we press this button in here, I'll press the average in, and now you'll see it'll actually read average power. Hello test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor, G3 OJV, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor. Now that's reading roughly 50 watts, which is about what you'd expect because if you've got a 100 watt transmit, 100 watt peak power, then you'd expect the average power to be roughly half that. It won't be exactly half that, but uh, in, in terms of very making it very simple, you'd expect the average power to be half what the peak power is. Now that's quite a handy feature, but I actually like to see quite a lot of meter movement so what I do is I switch from power to cal. Cal will enable me to get quite a lot of meter movement. And what I normally do is I, on a test transmission of the dummy load, I adjust this so I get full scale uh, deflection. So let's uh, let's see uh, what happens. Hello test one two three four five five four three two one. Hello test hello test one two three four five five four three two one one two three four five. Golf three Oscar Juliet Victor G three O J V. Golf three Oscar Juliet Victor G three O J V. Golf three Oscar Juliet Victor. Now it's almost like um, the VU meter that you get in audio. It's a meter which shows you roughly what's happening, and if you get used to the movement of that meter and where it's uh, where it's uh, going and how it's uh, goes towards the right hand side. You know what to expect and if anything changes you'll immediately see something on the meter changing. I find it quite um,
quite uh, nice to actually see a meter moving because when I transmit, I've very often got the spectrum display on my transceiver, and the spectrum display takes, takes up quite a lot of room. And although you can get power indication on the transceiver, you can't beat a big meter showing you exactly what's happening. So when I transmit, uh, I've got this uh, signal or this meter movement there, and I know that that when I run 100 watts, that is what I expect. So let me tr let me go into power on the transceiver. And as I turn the power down, so I've lost power, I'm losing power now. I've gone down to about 60 watts, let's go down to 50. Uh, right, we're down to 50 watts now, that's 50 watts. And you can see that there's a lot less uh, movement on the meter. Uh, if I go up to 100 watts, then you can see that uh, we're back up to the uh, full scale uh, uh, deflection there. And that's the way I use the meter. And uh, when I'm transmitted, if I want to check the VSW, I'll just flip the switch over. So I'm trans transmitting now uh, on uh, the band, and I want to just check what the uh, VSW is. I put the switch down. Oh, yeah, it's good. There's no hardly any reflective power at all. I can go back and monitor myself. So it's a quick way of checking your VSW while actually transmitting. This meter has a, another couple of little features. If I put this 12 volt supply in the back, find the socket. Now I've got an illuminated meter, I'll just turn the light off so you can see it. Oh, there we have uh, an illuminated meter. And there's one other thing as well. If I have it on the back, you'll see that there's a little switch there, and that switches the meter to 1kW. So if you're running a linear, you can still use the meter because it'll read up to 1 kilowatt of power. Do you need an external VSWR power meter, or don't you? Well, as I said at the beginning of this video, that's for you to decide. I hope I've covered it in enough depth. I'm sure there's bits and pieces I've left out and usually somebody will comment and say, oh, you didn't mention this, you didn't mention that. Well, yeah, uh, in that case, apologies. Um, there are some rather expensive uh, power meters around and uh, usually you get what you pay for. I mean, we do the diamond range, which are a bit, a bit more expensive than your uh, budget class VSWR power meter, but they are extremely well made, they are super accurate and very well respected, typical Japanese quality and engineering. But if you can't afford one of those, go for the budget line. One that's the range that I, I, I've shown you, the Avea range, they're very good, good value for money and we get very very little problem with them. I use one, enough said. So thank you for watching this video, nice to meet you again on the uh, video channel and keep in touch thank you for your support for this video channel don't forget to press the subscribe button because that just indicates to us how we're doing and how many people are finding this channel useful but in the meantime you take care enjoy your ham radio see you in the next video So far we've been looking at an external VSWR meter, but of course if you've got an external antenna tuner, some of these features are built into the antenna tuner because most tuners have got a, um, a VSWR meter, power meter reading. But, you know, you can also um, achieve some interesting results if you use something that's got an LED display. I find LED displays are quite useful. Let me show you uh, the LDG ATU. Not so much the ATU features, but the features of measuring power 
and VSWR.